Project Cars 3 is a racer so fundamentally different from its immediate forerunners it's bordering on unrecognisable. It abandons the sim racing sensibilities and adopts a radically different driving feel and a new career mode mostly made up of snack sized racing and driving challenges. There's never a time when it feels like an actual sequel to Project Cars 2 and that is disappointing. Slightly Mad Studios hasn't just sanded the edges off its previously stoic simulation experience, it smashed it to bits and reassembled it using two-thirds of the pieces, filling in the gaps with stuff snapped off other races. There are times when it appears more like a mobile spin-off, and other times where it seems like somewhat of a spiritual successor to the developer's own pre-project cars racer, Shift 2 Unleashed. The upshot isn't necessarily a bad racing game, but it's one with a real identity crisis that's hamstrung in a number of baffling ways compared to its excellent predecessor. Project Cars 3 ditches the race driver for hire model for a 10-tier curated experience stretching from road cars to hypercars and race cars to faster race cars. Gone is the ability to work your way through individual championships, replaced with a shotgun spray of fairly shallow 5 or so minute events. XP is accumulated, small smatterings of cash are awarded, and boxes are checked. The end result heavily resembles 2019's Grid, and if you're a fan of that game's easy to digest format and zippy stylized take on motor racing, you may be content with this. If you remain keen on the meaty race weekend atmosphere of Project Cars 2, you should definitely keep playing Project Cars 2. These new races rapidly become a bit of a grind really, and the initial payouts are a bit too stingy to completely support the number of cars you'll need to buy to complete specific events. Moving up and down tiers with a single car is a little inelegant too because there's no shortcut directly to the garage to downgrade cars. You have to shuffle all the way back to the main menu, which is ill thought out. Each event has three objectives to meet in order to unlock further events, many of which are straightforward enough to be completed without really paying attention to them. You can upgrade your entry level rides to take on the best Project Cars 3 has to offer, with performance and visual customization featured for the first time in the series. Stuffing enough upgrades into a Tommy Mac and an additional Lancer that it can go toe to toe with a Bugatti Chiron has a certain charm to it, reminiscent of the original Gran Turismo and the great many games it subsequently inspired, but it feels pretty weird in what used to be a realistic love letter to the otherwise regulated world of authentic racing. Visual customization doesn't offer the same freedom as the deep custom livery editors available in GT Sport, the Forza series, or even Need for Speed. It's more in line with Grid or Drive Club, with preset patterns and decals to choose from. I will say the choice of tyres is awesome though. I wish all racers had such an extensive collection of cool looking brand name tyres. On the topic of tyres, of course, is where the rubber meets the road. Project Cars 3's handling. It is radically different to Project Cars 2, to the point where it feels like an entirely different game. For better or for worse, Slightly Mad Studios has reinvented Project Cars as a mainstream, casual-friendly racer. Grippy up front, loose at the rear, and hard braking, Project Cars 3 feels surprisingly like grid on a gamepad. It's accessible and forgiving, and you can handily outbreak the AI by overdriving into corners and trusting the boosted braking to pull you up just in time for turn-in. A simple arcade-inspired feel is fun enough to hustle through circuits with for a while, and it's a little more demanding than grid, but I'm not hooked. It's certainly not what I was expecting, and it feels like much of the nuance between the cars I tested is now gone. There's less invisible hand-holding with a wheel, which requires smoother inputs and more delicate throttle to prevent spearing off track, and both wheels I tested were pleasingly plug and play and free of the settings nightmares that plague the likes of Assetto Corsa Competizione. However, they don't really feel quite like the right tools for the job, for what's essentially now a casual couch racer. The AI is bizarrely uneven too, depending on track and car combinations. On some of the point-to-point -point races early on in the career, I was pinballing off walls and still trouncing the highest level legendary AI in low-powered road cars by mammoth margins. But on other circuits, they're capable of seemingly supernatural grip levels, especially in the wet, and far harder to get ahead of. In terms of those car and track combinations, beyond a handful of inclusions and omissions, things haven't drastically changed from Project Cars 2. The streamlined car classes, however, are a massive letdown, and some are just an absolute mess. 
In Project Cars 2, the car roster was divided up into a host of individual categories, grouping cars in sensible ways and ensuring you'd be facing logical competition out on track. A lot of Project Cars 3's classes remain exclusive enough to ensure that still happens, but others are a grab bag of mismatched metal that look like absolute nonsense out in action. You can't really conduct a simple modern touring car race without 71 Escorts and 66 Mustangs and 99 Skyline R34s and Caterham 7s and a, even a handful of World Rally Championship Ford Fiesta lights turning up on the grid. And the off-brand GT3 class, dubbed GTA in Project Cars 3, now sprinkles V8 supercars and Sesto Elementos amongst GT3 cars. The GT4 class has a bloody NASCAR Fusion in it. It's such a weird problem to have. Sadly, it's far from the only one. While the custom event functionality remains, it's definitely not as fully featured. Laps are limited to 99, so Indy 500s and Bathurst 1000s are out, Le Mans is out, multi-class racing is out, and so is Rallycross. Weather slots have been reduced from four race conditions to just starting weather and finishing weather, so you can't have races that begin dry, rain, and then dry out again. That's almost moot, however, because tyre strategy isn't a factor anymore and there are no pit stops. Mechanical damage is out too. Cosmetic damage still features, but it regularly looks weird and awful, even when tickling the ultra settings on PC. Annoyingly, damage persists after restarts, so broken windscreens stay broken even if you retry an event, and the only way to fix them is crash again. Project Cars 3 seems to have a more saturated palette than the previous installment, meaning colors pop more, but in terms of detail, it lags some distance behind the likes of Forza or GT, and its wild weather isn't a patch on the F1 or Dirt games. <laughs> Impossible to recommend to fans of Project Cars 2, Project Cars 3 is a total 180 for the series. It's easy to pick up and play, and the racing here is robust enough for some casual thrills and spills, but ultimately it cribs from so many other racing games that racing gamers probably already own that it's simply inessential. For more realistic racing, check out our reviews for F1 2020 and Assetto Corsa Competizione. And for everything else, stay on IGN. That was awesome. Good to see you out there having fun. Gamescom 2020 is the heart of gaming, and you can keep to the beat right here on IGN. We've turned the single biggest show in gaming into five. Gamescom Now is your virtual show floor with up to the second live coverage. Gamescom Daily Show, Gamescom's first ever late night talk show. Our Gamescom Awesome Indie Show, the freshest deep cuts in indie gaming. And finally, the Gamescom Best of Show, including the Gamescom Award. Gamescom 2020 is available on IGN and wherever you stream Gamescom Now.